you know, we had the Cold War, and it's really funny. Nutritional research in the U.S. went off the deep end after World War II. We tossed out every German study ever, even though the Germans were like, uh, high-fat diets do really well if the fat is the right fat. They knew this 50 years ago, but you cannot accept information from bad people. So then all the Russian electrical stuff and some of the other things that they've done, um, not just for their space program, but just around you know fighting bacteria using uh, bacterial parasites called phages, uh, there's there's guys in Russia now who have in their freezer at home like 10 years of biochemistry laboratory research that's just sitting there because they don't want to let it melt <laughs> but it's not actively being done wow. so the electrical stuff coming out of there is phenomenal and Jay here uh, who's who's our main trainer for the first two days he regenerated his muscles and became you know a, a champion strength athlete using electrical stimulation straight off the Eastern Bloc but but here's the thing about the older Russian and East German technologies for biohacking, they're less about comfort. So oh, okay. the way they would do this for the Olympics in the 70s, right. uh, uh, you, you bite wood stick. And then, and then you know, literally people are like, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right, right. that's not what we're doing here. Yeah, we do make people feel pain. But what we do is we put the electrodes on and we find the spots that hurt the most because that's where you need help. Sure. And then we put the electrodes there and we turn it up until you, basically you, you say, I can't handle it anymore. But that's okay, you're, you're not gonna die, and it's, it's uncomfortable, and then you do the exercise, let's say I was fixing my bicep, I, I do five repetitions just like this, and all of a sudden the pain I thought I felt is gone because my nervous system adapted, then we turn the volume up. And you do this, and all of a sudden, you're like, wow, the thing that used to hurt doesn't hurt, and like, I move differently. As an example, the first time I did this, we did two 15 minute sessions uh, back to back uh, in, uh, in two days at, uh, at Jay's lab, and I added nine inches to my long jump. In that amount of time and it's because I basically had one of my glutes was partially deactivated people don't understand that if a muscle is injured your mammalian brain the the dog that lives inside your head will actively go oh that muscle was injured well I don't need that muscle to reproduce or eat which are basically the two things that Labradors like to do right so I'll just turn off control of it because it's not necessary right so you end up building these things and it's neurological as well as physiological you get scarring and things so if you fix the scarring which you can do with enzymes I, I did a lot of that stuff like I'm fond of putting my ankle behind my head just to sort of say I'm 40 and I haven't done yoga in a few years and look how did I say this flexible because I control scarring but the ability to do that isn't enough you need to turn on the nerves that control the muscles and remove the scarring and what Jay's doing is turning on nerves like no one's business it's awesome some of that is happening but it's relatively slow and the reason it's taking a long time, for instance, let's talk about one of my favorite technologies, cerebral electrical stimulation. So this is something I've had for more than a decade. I have one of 2,000 units ever manufactured and you cannot buy them at any price anymore. And you put a little clip on each ear and it runs an extremely small current, like as big as static electricity between the ears. And after a little while, the brain's like, oh, I need to synchronize to this frequency. So you can dial up what brain state you want including physical recovery. So if you're only gonna sleep two hours, you tell yourself, why don't you fix the body? We'll do memory consolidation and dreaming the next time I sleep. And literally, you put yourself in that mode, you wake up and you feel way better. This is what the Russians used to send one less astronaut to space because they had to sleep less. <laughs> I love those guys, right? So why is that not here? Well, you, you buy a unit for a thousand bucks or whatever they cost, uh, depends. You can actually get them for uh, heroin addiction. It turns out they work well for that. So there's a few prescription ones available. Other than that, there's crickets chirping, and it might have something to do with sales of sleep drugs that are recurring revenue model versus one-time revenue models. Right. And, and that's what this comes down to. The stuff Jay's doing can replace a huge amount of painkillers. <laughs> it just can. So once you, once you deal with the problem, so it comes down to, unfortunately, especially in the US, we have a, not a lot of evil people making decisions. What we have is emergent behaviors, where a lot of people are incented to make money, and if you make a billion tiny decisions, big data is now showing us, well, things emerge. And what emerges from the system we have today is a model that maximizes profit, which means you want people to not be too well and not be too sick. If they're too sick, they die, they stop paying. If they're too well, then they stop paying. So what we have is we have technologies that require recurring revenue models and don't let people get too well. It's not evil, it's just emergent behavior. So what we need to do in the essence of biohacking is just you take control of your own health and the well-being of your own body, including your cognitive function, including your physical body, and you resolve to be in control of that rather than you know pop in a pill every day. I pop a handful of pills every day, but they're nutritional substances that help my performance. They're not there to you know, treat this or that or the other.
the difference is profound because your prefrontal cortex can turn on all the way and you find you have way more control than you ever thought if only you have the pathways to train. It used to take 40 years to achieve advanced Zen mastery state. One of the speakers on, let's see, on uh, Saturday from BioCybernaut, this is a completely unheard of, kind of far out there to be honest thing. I've done it twice now. And this kind of training in seven days gives you the same brain state as someone who spent 40 years doing advanced Zen meditation, literally a Zen master from Japan. You don't get all the knowledge and experience of going through full Zen training, but you get the sense of calmness, the ability to turn off the voice in your head, things that are unheard of. In fact, most even neuroscientists who haven't, under, haven't gone through that line of reasoning and that kind of training say, not possible. How could you know what an advanced Zen master does? And the answer is a scientist who was a faculty member at UCSF went out and got the data and crunched the numbers using big data stuff 10 years ago before we really had big data and said, this is what they always do. Let's see what happens if I can help someone do it. Well, you get 12 IQ points and a 50% creativity boost. I've done that training twice. I don't think you get 12 points each time. I, I wish though.